All right, thank you so much for having me today. My name is Kathleen Fisher and I serve as the Director of Membership for the US Roundtable for Sustainable Beef. First, I'd like to start out with a little about us. We are a multi-stakeholder initiative developed to advance, support, and communicate continuous improvement of sustainability across the U.S. beef value chain. And our vision is for the U.S. beef value chain to be the trusted global leader in environmentally sound, socially responsible, and economically viable beef. We are volunteer-led and member-run, which basically means the best way to engage directly in our efforts is through membership. However, we do still offer areas for non-members to engage through our program work as well. Currently, we are 130 members strong, comprised of stakeholders from across the supply chain to include packers and processors, producers, including cow-calf, auction market, and feed yard, retail and food service members, allied industry, and NGO and civil society. While seemingly small in numbers, we are proud to say that our capacity for change is still quite robust. Our membership represents 30% of the cattle herd, more than 20 billion pounds of beef processed, and a reach of more than 100 million consumers across the US. Here you'll see a timeline of the work we have completed to date. You can see that while we are a fairly young organization, we have completed a lot in a very short period of time. We were officially incorporated in 2015 with 94 founding members, many of which are still members today. And then in 2016, as one of our first initiatives, we identified six high priority indicators that we felt were the areas most important to the sustainability of US beef. And these probably won't come as a surprise to anybody. They are water resources, land resources, air and greenhouse gas emissions, efficiency and yield, employee safety and well-being, and animal health and well-being. Then after we had our indicators, we set out to establish some sector specific metrics that were developed to assess and measure the sustainability across each of the high priority indicators that we had developed. And then once we knew which sector specific metrics we wanted to measure, we then set out to develop a set of sustainability assessment guides for each sector, affectionately known as the SAGs for lack of a better acronym. And these were a cumulative set of technical guidance documents outlining the purpose and approach of each of the sector metrics that we had developed. And during the development process, it was really important to us that these documents were fact and science based. So when looking through these more closely, you'll see we went to great lengths to cite a lot of thorough research and resources, including quite a bit of information that we included from the beef life cycle, beef sustainability life cycle assessment that was put together by the beef checkoff. And this was also an area that really set us apart and that each sector was tasked with developing their own sustainability assessment guides. And while participation was encouraged and provided from all sectors throughout the development process, at the end of the day, each sector was really in charge of owning their own material and that created a lot of buy-in for us and support from the materials that are being developed. Um, these documents did go through several rounds of public comment and revisions. And after two years of development, we were proud to say that we did have 100% of member adoption and approval. So along with the development of the SAGs, we also wanted to have some interactive resources to accompany our budding framework that we were put together. So we had developed a self-assessment tool for users to assess and measure their business or operation against the metrics that had been developed and then find opportunities for continuous improvement. And it's important to note that this tool was not created as a means to track data, but was merely a tool that was developed for folks to be able to measure their own individual progress and track their own self-growth. So once we completed all this great information, we wanted to combine all of these into one comprehensive report. So we developed the US Beef Industry Sustainability Framework, which included the high priority indicators, the sector specific metrics, the sustainability assessment guides, and the self-assessment tool. To keep everything easy to reference, we created a landing page that stores all of this information, including detail that can be broken down by sector, as well as several brief summaries and two-page summary reports. And all of this can be found on the landing page at beefsustainability.us. So then after we completed the framework, we really wanted to start bringing some of these materials to life. So we created a series of interactive modules that were aimed at supporting actions that could improve the sustainability of a user's operation. The interactive series incorporated the USRSB self-assessment tool, which were around the key indicators and the different levels of metrics to help industry professionals recognize areas they could excel, and then offer areas where they could also possibly improve. We started out with the producer modules, which you'll see here, that included the cow-calf, stalker, and backgrounder, and we finished those uh, late last year. 
Then thanks to our generous sponsorship from Cargill, we were able to develop the feed yard and auction market modules, as well as some packer and processor modules that were released earlier this week. We are currently in development for the fifth and final set of modules for the retail food service sector, and we are hoping to have those done uh, by December of this year. And I just want to say for those interested in learning more or possibly taking the modules, this on-demand series is free to access, and you can certainly take them more than once. And you can find all of these under the resources tab on the usrsb.org website. So the roundtable um, determined somewhat early on in the development process that it was not really in our scope to provide certification or verification for the adoption of our framework. So because of that, we wanted to create a process that evaluated supply chain programs that included those parameters that did align with our framework, but more in like a good housekeeping seal of approval kind of way. So our recognition program helps recognize uh, this voluntary adoption of the framework. And you'll see here the programs that have gone through this um, sort of or recognition program that went through a third party audit to evaluate their programs that were seeking recognition to their alignment. Um, so far to date, we do have 16 programs that have received this recognition and they represent 18.1 million pounds of beef and more than 7.4 million head of cattle. And I did wanna point out that this program is open to both members and non-members for a nominal fee. So if anyone has any programs they would like to submit for approval, they can contact us and we can give you more information on how to apply. So moving forward, uh, we are working on the development of some industry goals set across our six high priority indicators and developing sector targets to help reach those goals. Of course, COVID, like so many others, set us back a little bit, but we are back on track and our working group is, is hard at work to get these done. So heading into 2022, we're going to be finalizing those goals and then continuing to promote the adoption of the framework. And then as you see, 2023 and beyond, we're going to be continuing those efforts to promote the adoption of the framework and then tracking progress towards our goals and sector targets. To stay up to date on our efforts, we encourage anyone to check out our website. You can also find more information about membership and other ways to engage. You can also follow us on social media on all of the major platforms at USRSB. We did just join LinkedIn this last week, so we're very excited about that. And then lastly, for anyone interested in learning more, uh, we hope you can engage with us further and join us at our 2022 General Assembly meeting, which we hope will be in person in Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs>